Now, the earliest that gyms can reopen is April the 12th, and throughout the crisis, the closing of gyms and when they should be reopened has been particularly controversial, with claims that they and other leisure facilities are essential for people's mental health. Well, one Liverpool gym owner was fined for keeping his site open during Tier 3 rules and then successfully lobbied to have the regulations changed. But he's being joined now by the England rugby star James Haskell to call on the government to reopen gyms earlier than planned and to back a new workout to help out scheme. Well, joining me this morning uh, is the gym owner I was just referring to, Nick Whitcomb, and he joins alongside James Haskell, who's uh, spent a little bit of time in the gym himself. I can tell which one of you that we're talking about there, uh, James. You think uh, gyms and leisure centres and the like should be treated the same way as essential services, do you? Well, look, originally, when all this sort of happened, that was our kind of real concern. You know, we actually... Um, Myself and the rest of the Grenade team, we got on board a tank and rode into the House of Parliament to, to get everyone to sign a petition. Unfortunately, the landscape has changed then. It's not really about trying to argue to keep gyms open. But what we've learned during this pandemic is that health is wealth. And uh, unfortunately, we have an incredibly poor obesity rate in this country. You know, we're probably the worst in Europe, if, you know, if not the worst. Um, and, you know, to fight off future viruses, pandemics and everything else, we need to be healthy. And unfortunately, the government during the first lockdown, you know, because we want to keep businesses open across the board, advocated, you know, uh, eat out to help out. And what we want to do is get behind the scheme and everybody at Grenade is doing that. Um, and Nick, Nick's obviously got his own story with his, with his gym as well, but he's a big advocate of it, is to try to encourage this country to be healthier, for us to take a better approach towards health, training, for us, when we get out of this lockdown, whenever the government deemed for us to open gyms, to get behind this workout to help out scheme, which is subsidising any sort of paid, um, you know, uh, fee for, for training. So leisure centres, swimming pools, health clubs, you know, and I think we need to go a lot further and kind of raise education in terms of schools and nutrition because people can train anywhere and do anything. But the education out there is, is terrible. People just don't understand and we're just not taught how to do this. And I think if we're going to have future issues, we need to take a really, really firm stand and, and, and try to sort this out. And, and um, I think what guys like Nick have done is brilliant. And we'd love to see gyms open because it's not just about having a six pack. It's about your mental health, your cardiovascular health. It's the whole holistic approach. And unfortunately, we just we're just terrible at it in this country. And I think we, we go the wrong way. And now everybody's looking forward to getting out here. And as I saw your feature going on summer holidays, the first time they can down a pint. But, you know, that's not really going to help us next time this, this pandemic happens. And unfortunately, the naivety to think that COVID is going to disappear because we all got vaccinated is pretty short sighted. And I would have thought, you know, they're already making noise about next winter. I saw wearing masks, etc. But you're much more likely to fight stuff off if you're healthy. Yeah, well, uh, the pints certainly aren't going to help with the six packs, are they? Uh, Nick, let's bring you in here. I'm really curious to hear your story. You were fined for keeping your gym open back in the good old days of the tier system and you had armed police, I understand, on the premises. Yeah, we had a visit from the police in October when the tier three restrictions came into Liverpool. Uh, we spoke with our local mayors and... They said, look, this decision should have been left to us, but central governments have taken it upon themselves to close gyms. We wouldn't have done that. And it's written in the legislation that it should have been our decision. He said, as far as we're concerned, it's a legislative error. So we made the decision to keep the gyms open and we campaigned really hard and Grenade jumped on board and we got a whole lot of exposure. James came on board and eventually we managed to take the petition that we first had, which had 650,000 signatures. We got that to debate. We had all 16 MPs who were in attendance at the debate. We were in favour of our service being essential. And we had legislation overturned and we were allowed to open again in tier three. Yeah, and you raised a lot of money as well, didn't you, in the process. Would you defy government orders again? Would you open sooner than you're allowed to? No, I, I think right now, if governments have stated that it's only safe for us to open on the 12th of April, then we're fine with that. What we want to see is proper endorsements of the industry. If we're coming out the other side of this health crisis and we really need to put an emphasis on health so that we're better prepared, prevention is far better than cure. And what we're asking for is no different to what the hospitality industry have had, a, a workout to help out scheme. Now, the eat out to help out scheme costs the country approximately 850 million. So if it's a case of not being able to find the funds, you just need to look at the return that we give to the country. So through our sector alone, we we bring the country 5.2 billion in savings just in general healthcare savings. We've got 3.6 billion by preventing 900,000 cases of type 2 diabetes. 
We save the country 450 million per year and preventing 30 million GP visits. So to say that we would require less than the hospitality industry for a similar scheme, I think would be, you know, I think we could all agree on that. And what we give back to the country in terms of healthcare savings is absolutely huge. So it would be a small investment compared to what we contribute to the country. And it would go a long, long way to better preparing us for anything like this that happens in the future and most importantly from recovering from the situation that we've all just been through and that we still are. Yeah, so you're calling for some kind of parity in terms of financial support um, with, with other types of establishment. Uh, James, just a final one to you. I mean, you're, you're clearly a, a very fit bloke and I'm just wondering how much of that is from going to the gym because we've seen this rise, haven't we, in people doing a lot of stuff at home and as we go into spring, people have got used to going for a run, going for a walk. Do we need to be in gyms? Yeah, listen, so this is the first argument that's always levelled against people. And as soon as I post on social media, people go, well, why can't you just go for a walk, mate? Why can't you just go running? The fact of the matter is, and this is going to sound harsh, nobody knows what they're doing. If you are, I do talks all the time with nutrition, on health and everything else. Nobody understands how to eat. Nobody understands what is required to change your body and to be healthy. And the fact is, if it was that simple, we'd all be in shape. We wouldn't all be hugely obese like this country is. And I think... What I'm saying about this is not just encouraging people to go to gyms, but it's because it's not for some people, gyms don't work. It could be going to health clubs, five aside football. It could be playing team sport. It's just encouraging people to be in a healthier mindset and to understand the basics of eating, the basics of calories. Why do we teach kids so much stuff in school that they never use when it'd be a good idea to teach them how to cook healthy food? What a good example of a protein source is. You know, why do we encourage people to go running when it's, it's but, you know, unless you want a body like Mo Farah, running is not going to be the, the key thing to do for you. It's high impact. Most people don't understand how to run properly or wear the right shoes. And then they get bored after two minutes and give up. There is always yeah. something out there. You can see the likes of Joe Wicks, you know, with his PE and how he's captured the country's yeah. imagination. There is something for everybody, but we've just got to make sure we, we advise it and suggest how to do it best. OK. All right. Really good to talk to both of you, gents, this morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you.